Now, before we start this video, let me just give you guys a quick sneak peek on something I've been working on for a while. Now, just imagine this is my friend's Fire Stick and he lives in France. Now, he's having a bit of trouble with Remote ADB Shell and he gives me a call and says, Hey, Tech Doctor, how can I type in some commands? Um, I'm a bit confused. What do I do? Well, I'll say to him, just hang on a second. Let me grab my smartphone. Then using my smartphone, I'll then make a connection to his Fire Stick from the internet. I can now see the screen that he's looking at. I'll press connect for him. Well, he can see that connects straight away in the background. I'll then say, I think the command that you need to type in is just PM. And every letter that I'm typing in that's being sent from my phone through the internet onto his Fire Stick in France. So. I have full control of his device. I can click on run for him. We can see the results that he would see on his screen and basically just have complete control of any fire stick anywhere in the world, guys. So I really am looking forward to sharing this video with you guys. So make sure you are subscribed and hit that bell so you know exactly when that video drops. Thanks. Now, people that have had fire sticks for a while do understand the limitations that the device has. Things like, you know, we have limited amount of storage. We have limited amount of RAM. We have no access to the Play Store and stuff like that. But then you can follow some tutorials and overcome these limitations. Like you can access the Google Play Store by using the Aurora Store. You can overcome your low storage issue by using an OTG cable and migrating your applications to a USB drive. And you can also overcome your low memory issue by freezing or disabling applications. All of these things I have covered in previous videos. Now another bugbear with the Fire Stick, and lots of people have told me about this, is the standard keyboard, which we can see on the screen now. So I really don't understand why we don't have a QWERTY keyboard. I mean, all of my devices, my Nvidia Shield, my TiVo Stream, all these other devices have QWERTY keyboards, but for some reason the Amazon keyboard doesn't follow that standard. Also, if you use a virtual mouse, let me bring that up, we can see that you can't actually click anything. So this keyboard is completely useless if you are using a mouse toggle and we can see none of that is working even though I'm clicking. We can see none of those keys are actually registering. So in this video today, let me show you how you can change the default keyboard on your Amazon device to use the same keyboard as the Nvidia Shield. Now that keyboard will give you customizations. You can change the theme. Of course, the keyboard follows the QWERTY format. You can also use the mouse toggle with it and it also supports predictive inputs. So as you're typing, you can actually click on some of the suggestions to minimize that for you. So make sure you hit that like button, make sure you hit that subscribe button. So with all of that being said, Said, let's get started. If you're new to the channel and you want to stay up to date with the latest tech tutorials, the latest Fire Stick, Android and Android TV tips and tricks, then please do subscribe and hit the notification bell. It's a small click from you, but it makes a big difference to me. Thank you. Now I'm doing my process on the 4K Fire Stick. So the first thing we need to do is just make sure inside settings, inside my Fire TV, inside developer options, you have both these options enabled. Once that's done, let's press the home key. And let's now start downloader because we're going to make a connection to my website and get access to the latest tutorials. So once again, the address for my website is http colon forward slash forward slash bit dot ly. And we can just see here, guys, if I did have a QWERTY keyboard, I will be able to type much faster and also having the suggestions. I mean, as soon as I type in bit, it should give me an option to click on bit.ly or and if I keep typing in the same things again and again, then that keyboard should then give me that as an option for me to click on as a predictive or suggestive input forward slash TDUK. That's me and the numbers 2019. Let's type that in and click on go or press the play button on your remote. Now, when you get to my website, you want to head over to the hamburger menu and then click on tutorial. So let's do that now. And here is the latest tutorial. So we can see that this keyboard has these great features. It's designed for TVs, it supports any remote control. It does support dozens of different languages. So if you do want to input in a different language, you can do that. And of course it doesn't need any kind of Google services. Okay, let's scroll down. Okay, so the two applications we need, firstly remote ADB shell, that's going to be so we can enter in an ADB command. And the second application is the keyboard itself. So I already have this installed on my device. Let me now click on this. And let's now install the Leanback Keyboard Pro. Let's scroll down and click on the green download button. Okay, let's click on install. Let's click on done. Let's press the home key. 
Now for this process to work, we need to run two ADB commands. Now the easiest way to do that is just to use my website and then just copy and paste those two commands into remote ADB shell. Now some of you may prefer to do that by using your cell phone or using the MyFi TV application to copy and paste commands. But in this video, I'm just gonna show you how you can do everything from the Fire Stick itself. So let's start ADB shell. Now, as we're making a connection to ourselves, we can leave the IP address as 127.0.0.1, leave the port as 5555. Let's click on connect. Okay, we are now connected. And as I always say, guys, any kind of issues using ADB, the easiest fix for the 4K Fire Stick is just to switch off ADB, debugging, and then turn it back on. I guess now that we made that connection, let's now get the first command. So let me now go back to my website. Let's go down the tutorial. And we can see here, these are the two ADB commands that we need. So let's now bring up the virtual mouse. Let's click over here. Let's now drag this over. And I'm doing all of this using the standard Fire Stick remote control. But like I said, guys, you may find it easier by just using your cell phone, going to my website, copying this text out, and then you can use the MyFi TV application to paste that into Remote ADB Shell. Let's just drag this a bit more. There we go. I can now click on Copy. I can now press the Home key. Go back to Remote ADB Shell. Before I do paste, I have to bring up the virtual keyboard. So let's click there. There's the virtual keyboard. I can now bring up the virtual mouse, double press the play button. Actually, that made the keyboard disappear. So let me now click down here again using the virtual mouse. I can now go to the top here. And now I can press and hold the select button. And I should see, there we go. I now see paste, so I click on paste. There's the whole command there. I can now press the back button on the remote and now click on run. Let's press the back button again, just so we can see that that command has gone in without any issues. And we can see there it says now enabled. Okay, so we need one more command. So once again, let's press the home key, go back to my website, bring up the virtual mouse, double press the play button. And this time let's now get the second line. So again, let's double click here. Okay, so now I can drag this across. Let's now get all of the second line. There we go. Click on copy. I can now press the home key twice. Go back to remote ADB shell. Bring up the virtual mouse. Go to the bottom. Click here to bring up the virtual keyboard. Go to the top. Press and hold here. And there's paste. So it is a little bit fiddly, but as we can see, it definitely works. All right, so I can now press the back button once just so I can click on run. Let's press the back button again. And there we can see that the second command has gone in and it's now telling us that the lean keyboard is now selected. Now, if I click at the bottom here, watch what happens. And there we have it, guys. We have a brand new keyboard, which we can now use across all of our applications. So your native Amazon applications, your third party applications, wherever you need to enter in any kind of keyboard commands, you'll now see the QWERTY keyboard as we can see now. And we can just see, guys, it just looks so much nicer. Of course, it is in QWERTY format. Now, if you want to customize the keyboard, let's click on this thing over here. Okay, so for example, we can change the layout. So if you do want to use a foreign layout for whatever reason, you've got lots of languages in here. Let's back out of that. Let me press the home key. Let's now open up the application. Okay, so we've already activated the keyboard, so that part is done. Let's click on change theme. So you can use the default theme, which I believe is a light theme. And you have a couple of different dark themes. Uh, let's just leave the default theme for now. Okay, so in miscellaneous, here we can see we have options like if you do want to use a physical keyboard on your device, what happens to the on-screen keyboard? And we can see by default that the on-screen keyboard will actually stay on. You can also choose to enlarge the keyboard if that makes it easier for you. Now here's the key thing, guys. We do see we have enable suggestions. So let's leave that enabled. Let's press the back button. Okay, so let's now try some applications. So let's go back to Downloader. And we can see now if I go back to Home, if I click up here, and we can see that theme is now applied correctly. So, and now typing things in because we have the QWERTY keyboard should be that little bit faster. But let's try another application. So for example, let's say we're trying to sign into a new application like IP Vanish. Let's click on that. 
and there we can just see the predictive suggestions because the keyboard knows that you're in a place where you do have to enter in a username or an email address. So instead of you typing in the at and the typical email domains, it will actually allow you to click on one of those instead. So if I just type in something like TD and go to the top here. So I can now look at all of these different domains. Uh, so let's say for example, I'm using uh, yahoo.com one click and we can now see that's typed in for me. So I really think the predictive suggestions are a great feature of this keyboard. Now, the other thing I said before was the fact that when you are using the virtual mouse, you cannot use the keyboard. So let's see if that works on this one. Let's now bring up the virtual mouse. So now, for example, if I click here, now I go to my keyboard, we can see I can actually use the virtual keyboard by using the virtual mouse. And that's something that just didn't work with the standard Amazon keyboard. So I can actually use my mouse pointer if you want to, to use the on-screen keyboard. That's working great. Okay, let's back out of that. Now let's see what happens when we actually reboot the device. Let me do that now by pressing the play button and the select button together for six seconds. So one, and let me just take this opportunity to give a massive thanks to all of the new members on my channel. Your support really does mean a lot. And if any of you guys want to sign up, I'm doing a special promotion for the first 25 members of my channel, whereby all of you will be able to join my private chat group. And in this chat group, we can talk about stuff, we can provide support to each other, and we can also share our APKs. So if that sounds of interest to you, do have a look out for the join button. Thank you. Okay, so my device is now rebooted. Let's try an application. Click on here. And there we can just see that even after restart, the custom keyboard persists. So you don't type in any more commands or anything else, you can carry on using your custom keyboard. But let's say for example, you do want to go back to the stock keyboard. Well, the easiest way to do that is just press the home key, press and hold the home key, go to your apps library, find link key in the list, press the context key on that, click on uninstall, Click on OK, press the home key again, go back to your application, click up there again. And just like that, we're now back to the stock keyboard. So that's all for this video, guys. Many thanks for watching. Lots of you were asking if there was any way we could change the stock keyboard on our Amazon devices. If you did find this video useful, do give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more stuff like this, then please do subscribe and hit the notification bell. As always, I always appreciate your likes, your shares, your comments. So do let me know what you think. Leave me a comment below and I'll hopefully catch up with you guys real soon. Thanks.